With everyone stuck at home these days, there's been a tremendous increase in output of recorded content for social media. Many people have been asking me about the different setups I use to record my voice and the saxophone for my videos. So today I'm gonna show you a few different inexpensive and easy to use options for recording audio directly to your phone or to your computer. I'm also going to show you some tips on how to get the best results from those recordings. Jay Metcalf here. I hope you're doing well. Before we get started, do me a quick favor and drop me one of these. If you like saxophone tutorials and gear reviews like the one you're about to watch. Also, if you're not already subscribed, get yourself subscribed. I have two main setups for recording saxophone. The one you normally see me play here in this studio, which is expensive, complex, and not practical for most people. At home in my practice studio, I record directly into my phone using this USB microphone. It's the Apogee Mic Plus, and it's recording my voice right now. This setup costs a lot less, is very easy to use, is extremely portable, and it's great for doing quick Instagram videos, podcasts, Skype calls, that sort of thing. I put timestamps in the description below for all the different audio examples in this video so that you can jump around and compare more easily. Keep in mind, everything is recorded without any additional EQ or effects. Before the microphone even comes into play, there are two important factors that have a much bigger impact on the quality of the audio you record. The first is the instrument or voice you are recording. If that doesn't sound great from the beginning, no amount of expensive gear can correct for this. The source audio is always the most important factor. So if you're a saxophone player, for example, be sure to develop your sound and technique before worrying about expensive microphones. The second important factor is the room you are recording in. If your room sounds terrible, there's not much point in getting expensive gear because there's gonna be a very low ceiling on the quality of audio you can get in that environment. As you can see in my studio here, I've got acoustic panels on the walls, on the ceiling, and rugs on the floor. Without those things, the sound in here would be terrible. There would be tons of unwanted reflections against all the walls. There would be certain frequencies that just kept ringing forever and others that you would hardly hear. If you follow me on Instagram, you may have noticed that the room where I record a lot of those posts is tiny. I've got acoustic panels in that room as well, but there's only so much they can do in such a small space. Check out this comparison of me recording into the same mic in this room compared to the other room. Hear the difference? The room has a big impact on the sound and your microphone will pick up a lot of that. Which brings me to the third important factor to consider before investing a lot in microphones is learning how to use it. If you have the most expensive microphone in the world, if you're not using it correctly, the results aren't gonna be great. It takes a lot of practice to get the best results with your recording gear and that's why an experienced audio engineer can get great recordings with very basic equipment. So my advice to you is to start out with a simple setup and practice with it a lot so that you can learn how to get the most out of it. That's pretty much the same as my advice for buying saxophones. Now the most simple setup that you already have is just recording with your phone. It's got a built-in microphone and on the newer phones, you can get pretty good quality with that. There is one major problem when recording music using the built-in microphone on your phone though. It has an auto gain feature so that if you're playing very loudly, it turns the audio down. And if you're playing very soft, it's gonna turn the volume up. So the end result is it digitally distorts your dynamics. And by the way, digital dynamic distortion, great name for a band. Go ahead and use that. Let's listen to this recording made using the internal mic on my iPhone.
the first note I play there is really loud. And you can hear, if you listen closely, the computer quickly turning the volume down. Between phrases, when there's a bit of silence, the computer makes up for that, turns the volume back up so that when I come back in, everything is really loud again, and then you can hear it turn the volume down again. <laughs> to be honest, all things considered, the built-in mic in the iPhone is pretty good, but once you plug in an external microphone, the quality can increase significantly and you can set a fixed gain level. I've got a few that I've purchased over the years, so let's compare and listen to how they record my saxophone. As always, I put links in the description below if you want to get more information or purchase one for yourself. Also, the first person in the comments below who can identify where I transcribed the music I'm playing in all the examples gets a free better sax hat. The first one is the Shure MV88, and it sells for about $150. I like this mic, but it's got a few drawbacks I want to point out. First, it only works on iOS devices like iPhones and iPads, so that's obviously a deal breaker for a lot of people. Second, you have to take your phone out of the case to plug it in. Third, it's always attached to the phone, so I can't get as close to the mic as I'd like to be and still get a decent angle for a video. Generally speaking, the further away the mic is from the saxophone, the more of the room sound you're gonna get. I place these mics fairly close to the bell because that's where they sound best to me. If I'm forced to put the microphone much further away, the sound's not gonna be as good. This is how I set up my phone with a USB microphone when making videos for Instagram. I have a standard mic stand with an extra boom arm attachment. I mount the phone further away with this Manfrotto mount and use the long boom arm to position the mic near the bell of the saxophone. It's a very simple setup that's all in one piece, so you just have to put your phone in the mount and plug in the mic and you're ready to go. Next up is the Shure MV5, which sells for about $100. This one is much better for recording saxophone because it comes with one meter long cables, which gives you enough distance to position the mic close to the bell and have your phone far enough away to get a good angle for video. It can connect to all types of smartphones and computers. It comes with a metal stand, which I find entirely useless, but it can be fitted to a mic stand with an adapter, not included, as you see here. It doesn't sound as good as the MV88 to me, but it's a lot more practical and costs less. Now let's listen to this one, the Apogee Mic Plus, which sells for $259. If all these mics sound the same to you, that's perfectly fine. You know, just use the mic built into your phone and save yourself some money. For me though, the Apogee Mic Plus sounds much better than the other two Shure mics and the internal iPhone mic. There's much more depth and detail in the sound and it doesn't have that shrill high end that I find in most cheap microphones. This mic has a gain knob on the front as well as a level indicator, and both of those are very helpful. It can work with all devices and computers, and it comes with some nice accessories like this stand and this adapter, which allow you to mount it on a normal mic stand and precisely adjust the position. If you're looking to improve the quality of your audio recordings in a simple and affordable way, the Apogee Mic Plus is my recommendation based on the different mics I've worked with. There are tons of options out there and I'm sure there's a lot more 
that will be coming out soon. Now, just for the sake of comparison, let's listen to me playing the same example into my usual studio setup, which is a Coles 4038 ribbon microphone going through a universal audio Apollo twin. It's not cheap. It's not simple to use. And it's definitely not portable, but sounds really good.